Now let us take a slight small variation in this example. Instead of making this end fixed as before, as was done earlier, what we will now do is provide some motion to this. And this is a very common application in mechanical engineering. You have seen the uh, cam follower arrangement. So on the other side, you have the cam. And the profile of the cam produces a motion uh, for the follower. So it imposes a motion on the follower. And that motion, let us designate it as, let us define it as V naught. So this may, uh, this will change with time depending upon what is the speed of revolution of the cam or what is the speed of motion of this cam. So we have V naught and this V naught is the velocity at this end. Uh, let's say it's the velocity of the follower because the follower is just following this profile. On the other, on the other side, Things are exactly the same as we discussed earlier. We have a one junction representing motion of this mass. And we assign the force uh, SC. Uh, also, uh, the momentum, uh, uh, also this mass is modeled using this I element. Uh, it's placed on a one junction here. It's a common flow junction. And in order to model this C and R elements, we uh, take the relative motion, V1 minus V0. Now, here, this time, this is not equal to zero. So, because it's not a fixed end. So, here we have V1 minus V0. We have to take the relative motion. So, this bonds flow is equal to this bonds flow minus this bonds flow. So V1 minus V0. And this is common to both these elements K and R. So this goes to K, uh, the C element here, and this goes to the R element. So you can see that we have got the complete bond graph model for this system, which is slightly different. It's like a skateboard problem, okay? where the skates are following a, a particular profile and uh, the, the person is just um, moving up and down uh, depending upon the shape of this profile and how he is connected to this through this C and R elements. It's a very simple model. Uh, again, you can see that even in this model, uh, we have causal it. It's completely causal and all elements i and c elements are in proper integral causality so they will contribute states to the system so we have this momentum uh, which is the state associated with this i element and we have this generalized displacement q which is associated with this c element now suppose you want to extend this problem you want to add this spring damper combination to this. OK, how should you proceed? So it's a little simple. It's simple. This part is exactly as we did in the previous, uh, in the first part here, exactly this. And what we are going to do is just add the other things to it. So. This part, we know how to model. We have done it. We have added this part here, this additional system over here. How do you model this? Up till this motion of the mass, we knew how it could be done. How should we do it for this part? I've already shown it on this figure, so I'll just explain this figure to you how it has been obtained. We will take a point here uh, whose motion is say V2. Okay. So uh, this is just an intermediate point here, which is taken at this join. 
and uh, we show its motion here as uh, this one junction with uh, suffix v2 representing the flow v2 and then you take the relative motion between this end and this end in order to model the spring so this relative motion is equal to v2 minus v which is already the velocity of this mass and here you can assign the c element so that is done then between this point and the end over here you have at the end over here you have sf a source of flow which is v1 this is imposed on the system here it's imposing a flow and between these two ends of the spring damper combination you have the same relative motion so you take v2 uh, you you take v1 minus v2 okay this velocity is v1 so this velocity is v1 and this is v2 okay so this becomes v1 minus v2 okay so this is common to both these elements k2 uh, c k2 and r r and you can of course uh, draw their causality and the causal strokes so i'll just uh, do them quickly using strokes here uh, we have the flow over here like this okay and here one bond has brought in flow but that's not good enough so we'll start over here we'll place this in integral causality the c element okay and a bond has brought in information of effort into the zero junction all the other bonds have to accept it so this junction is completely causal uh, effort has come into this one junction so it has to um, only one bond can bring in information of flow so it has to be like this and here one bond has brought in the information of flow one bond has brought in information of effort into the zero junction the other bonds have to accept this flow so we will place the causal stroke here like this okay only one bond can bring in information of effort in a zero junction uh, over here again we will have to take the c element in integral causality and this r element will go like this okay so the nature of causality of this bond and this bond they are different okay this is giving effort this is giving flow uh, so this is uh, the complete causality for this system we can simplify the system we can simplify this system because there are these redundancies over here so we'll simplify this system okay so when you simplify it uh, you understand that uh, this becomes redundant junction it can be removed and when you try to remove it uh, one junction one zero junction and this zero junction they become the same so you just uh, place one on the other so this is what you get okay uh, so this system has 1 2 3 and 4 four states associated with it the states are q1 q2 p3 and p4 okay so they are slightly larger states 
a larger number of states um, but this is how um, it is it is this system is modeled using four states so there are two c elements uh, three c elements and one i element okay 